in my first few years of ministry, there was one particular thing that I got completely wrong. I got it, I got it completely wrong. In those first couple of churches that I pastored, I talked about volunteering all the time. We talked about volunteering in those churches all the time. In fact, we even had sign-up lists that would go around during worship around the sanctuary. Now, these were much smaller churches than, than we are here at Polk Street, but we, we, we had those sign-up lists that went around, and they were um, they, they, people could sign up to, to read scripture, or to, uh, to lead a prayer, to, uh, to, to do things in the life of the church. And we even called them volunteer sign-up sheets. We called, we called those who served in the, in the church volunteers. And since then, I have realized that that was a horrible, horrible mistake. Because volunteering is something that well, we typically do for our own benefit. That's who volunteers are. Volunteers are people who step up and they, and they do things because, well, it may, it may help people, it, it may, it may um, make a little bit of a difference, but volunteers primarily, as volunteers, we step up and do things as volunteers because it makes us feel good. Do you remember after the 9-11 attacks? Do you remember the, 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 the days and the weeks and even a, a few months after those attacks? Do you remember what, what happened to all of the, all of the blood banks and the, and the donation centers all around, all around the United States? Do you remember what happened? They had lines that stretched out the door. But then, within just a few months, then we began to hear that the the blood donations were no longer there. People were not volunteering like they had in the, in the, in the months following 9-11. I remember I was a pastor then. I remember literally we had people calling the church. First time this has happened in my 25 years of ministry. People calling the church asking, how can we help? It hasn't happened since. And those calls lasted for just a couple of days. Because you see, when we, when, when, when we volunteer and we see ourselves as, as volunteers, volunteerism is based on the good feeling that you get when you help someone else out. And, and no doubt those good feelings are important and no doubt those good feelings are real. But the problem with volunteerism is that, is that volunteering only lasts as long as those good feelings. And when those good feelings then go away, then we quit volunteering. I, I propose today that there is a, there's a better understanding of how to serve in the life of the church. And that better understanding is this. We have been blessed to be a blessing to others. We have been blessed to be a blessing to others. Today we're completing this short little series dealing with our, really our purpose here at Polk Street and we have been seeing how, how we, um, we are committed at Polk Street to celebrating God's love. It's part of, it's part of why we do what we do. Why do we, why do we do things here at Polk Street? We do those things because we want to celebrate God's love. We also are committed to growing in Christ. Why do we do what we do? Well, because we're committed to growing in Christ, not only ourselves, but also offering those opportunities up for others. And then finally, so again, we're, we're committed to celebrating God's love, committed to growing in Christ, but we're also committed to blessing the world. We're committed to blessing the world. That is, that, is, that is key to, to, to what we do here at Polk Street and, and who we are here at Polk Street. If you were to ask me what my favorite passage of Scripture is, I'm not sure that I could come up with just one. There are, there are a number, though, that make my, make my top ten list or make my top five list. Our passage today would make my top five list. I love this passage of Scripture so much. What good is it? my brothers, if someone comes to you and they have, a, they have a physical need and you do nothing about it. Instead, you, you wish them well and you, you tell them, keep warm and well fed. I'm going to pray for you, but you do nothing about their needs. What good does it do them? It does them absolutely no good. No good at all. At all. In fact, James here says that, that, if, that if you're living your life like that, 
If you're living your life and you're not living out your faith, if you're not doing anything about the needs of others, you don't have any faith at all. It's not real faith at all. Those of you who may have been here at Polk Street on, on Friday evening, we had a, a special event. We, we were, it was a fundraiser for Heal the City, and a uh, noted author, New York Times bestselling author, uh, Bob Goff was here, and uh, he spoke for about an hour. If you missed it, you missed, you missed a, a rich blessing in your life. That, was, that really was the thrust of what he talked about on, on Friday night, is that we've We've got to be living out our faith as Christians. No longer can this, is it enough just simply to sit in our pews. No longer is it enough to just tell people, oh, we'll pray for you if you have a need. Oh, we'll pray about you. Oh, we'll sure pray for you. God bless your soul. If that's all we're doing, it's not real faith. We're just kind of religious And the world doesn't need more religious people. The world needs followers of Jesus Christ who will go to the ends of the earth to bless others. We have been called to bless the world. We've been called to bless the world. The problem for most Christians is, well, do you all have farm ponds around here? That's what what we call them. That's what we call them where I'm from. It's, It's a farm pond. Uh, where, where I'm from, we have lots of, lots of deep canyons and we have lots of creeks. Those creeks don't run very often because there's, there's not enough rainfall and there's not enough surface water to, to, keep those, the, to keep those creeks running. But after a really big rainstorm, we'll get runoff. And those, those, those creeks then will, will, will be full of water. Well, back in the 1940s and 1950s, uh, the government decided that they needed to control the flooding that was occurring in the area that I, that I grew up in, in northwest Oklahoma. The rivers would flood tremendously during these large rainstorms, and so um, they began to build all kinds of ponds on these creeks, all these farm ponds on these creeks. And so the, it, it stopped the, the big flooding of the South Canadian River and the Cimarron River and the North Canadian River, even the Washita River. It, it stopped most of the flooding of those rivers. And the second benefit was that it it provided a, a, a way for farmers and ranchers to have water for their livestock. One of the problems with these farm ponds, however, is that, is that water will flow into those farm ponds, but there's no way for the water to get out. And so that water just sits there in those farm ponds. And during the summer, the heat of the summer, that, those, that water will get, will get warm, it will get full of algae, it will get stagnant. And that's what happens in our lives because, because continually God is, is, is pouring blessing upon blessing upon blessing into our lives. And if there is no way for those, for those blessings to, to reach the world in our lives, our lives will become stagnant, full of, full of, full of stuff that, that shouldn't be there and and, and, our, and our lives just simply get stagnant. Instead of being like a farm pond, our lives should be more like a river, a flow through of God's blessings. God has blessed us so that we might be a blessing to the world. You see here at Polk Street, we are committed to blessing the world. So why do we do what we do? Why are we committed to the, uh, to the elementary school at San Jacinto? Why, why are we committed to that? Why are we committed to, to feeding over 200 children every single week? Why do we have people come to this church and they come? And I, I, see, I, I see them on Friday mornings. I see them throughout the week. They come and they, they, come and they, uh, they unload food and they take that food up to the third floor. And then we have volunteers, not volunteers, we have servants that come in. And they serve in the life of the church. They, are, they come they come to pack up all of those snack packs and then they go to San Jacinto and they help, they help uh, distribute those and they, they, they do all kinds of things at San Jacinto, not so that they can volunteer their time, so that they can get warm, fuzzy feelings. No, they do that because they want to bless the world. That's why we do what we do here at Polk Street, because we recognize that God has so richly blessed us and we are then called to bless others all in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when we, are, when we are committed to blessing the world, when we come to the church with 
not with a volunteerism mindset, meaning that we're going to do this only as long as it feels good. Instead, when we come and we are truly serving, when we are wanting to bless the world because God has blessed us, then, then when things go wrong, it doesn't bother us too much. When someone doesn't remember our name or forgets our name here at church, uh, have, by, by the way, have you ever have you noticed that that the church is a mess, and we're we're just a mess because we're ordinary everyday people. We're just we're just kind of a mess. I mean, there there at times at times I wonder to myself, is there anybody driving this big old ship? And I look, oh, it should be me, I guess. <laughs> or, I mean. That we, we, have, we have all kinds of things that go on that we think, well, that wasn't planned at all. I mean, the church is an absolute mess. We are, because we're, we're, we're a church full of people who's, who, are, who are absolute messes. We're not perfect at all. But you see, when, when, we, when we see ourselves as volunteers, and we're going to come and serve in the life of the church only as long as we have warm, fuzzy feelings, I can promise you, I've been around the church long enough to know that those warm, fuzzy feelings don't last very long because there's always going to be something that goes wrong. A ministry isn't going to be run our way, the way that we like it. Somebody's going to forget our name. We're, we're, uh, uh, somebody's going to forget to do something and, 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 and somebody's going to get mad at someone else and the church isn't going to sing your favorite songs and the preacher's not real good sometimes and, the, and, and the, whatever the case, sometimes things go wrong and when we're volunteers, oh, that's enough. I'm going to step back from that. But you see, if we are see ourselves as servants of the Almighty and we see ourselves as blessing the world because we have been blessed, then those things don't bother us. Those things don't get on our nerves. Those things don't make us step, step away and quit, quit serving in the life of the church. We have been a blessing to bless others. And here at Polk Street, we are committed to blessing the world. Today is the day that we ask our folks to return their financial commitment cards. And we recognize, in fact, I I recognize more so this year than ever before. Whenever we put together a budget, it's an abs, I mean, it's a a pretty good guesstimate, but it really really is a guess. And we know that coming, that going into next year, we know more so than ever before in my, in my previous, this is my 25th, this is my this is my 25th finance campaign, and more so than, than any before, uh, I have no idea what our finances are going to look like in the life of the church. I have no idea. There are some of you who have, who have come here today, and you received my letter, my letter a couple of weeks ago, and you received a commitment card in the mail, and you said, nope, not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to be waiting until after the vote on January 29th. I can't make that kind of commitment. I, we understand that. Absolutely, we understand that. Uh, everybody's got to do what you feel that God is calling you to do. But what I am asking you to do today is this. I want you to be a blessing to the world. No longer, no longer can we keep these blessings to ourselves. Our lives will become stagnant when we do that. We've got to take the blessings that God has given us and we extend those same kinds of blessings to the world. And so for some of you here today, it's going to look like returning a financial commitment card. We have some baskets here on the communion table that uh, uh, just simply is a sign. Just, this is just simply a, a sign of, of, of our commitment to the Lord. This is not our commitment to the church. This is our commitment to the Lord, and as we bring these cards and we put them on the baskets on the communion table, it's a sign that we're committing these things to God. There are others of you today, again, that um, you're not much into writing these kinds of things, and you're not sure about any of that. That's okay. That's okay. It, if, if you want to bring a financial commitment card and do so, you're welcome to do so during, uh, during our song of invitation. But instead, I'm just simply asking that everyone on this day commit to blessing the world. You know, the world, has, the world has too many people who are tearing one another down. The world has too many people who are, who are not blessing the world. Instead, they're cursing the world. We are called to be a blessing to the world. Come and do so. 
come and be a part of this church that is that's committed that's committed their ministry people who have committed their lives to blessing the world would you bow with me please Almighty God, we thank you that you have, well, we're awed that you have blessed us, that we might be a blessing to others. No doubt, oh God, you have blessed us so richly and so tremendously. You have given us incredible family. You have, you have given us incredible ministries. You have given us so much. And God, you have, again, you have blessed us so that we might be a blessing to others. Lord, we pray that on this day we might commit our lives to, not to volunteering, not to doing things in the life of the church because it makes us feel good, but instead serving in the life of the church so that we might be a blessing to the world. Oh God, empower us to bless others in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.